Hello everyone, Linda Israel here. Today I'm sharing with you a project that I created and shared during one of my live streams a few weeks ago, and it was suggested that I make it a standalone tutorial. The idea was, is I had some cardstock left over that was four inches wide and about eight inches tall, and I wanted to make some journal cards, but have a pocket. And at the same time, I had this unusual kind of a brown manila paper that my mother-in-law gave me. So I thought, well, what could I do to make this work? This is the base of it. It is a this paper behind and it opens up to reveal a flip and multiple pockets to hold all of the elements. So I'm calling this a belly band with flip and pockets. To get started, what I did was I scored at four and a quarter inches from top to bottom. Then I folded that over and I scored again and then folded this over. And then I decided, okay, do I want this to have a left flip, meaning it goes to the left, or do I want a right flip? And I've decided today I want this to be a right flip. I already started one because my video was not recording correctly. So <laughs> I've already done part of this. I've added some distress inks to the inside of this flip because I don't plan to put anything on there. And then I cut a piece of a digital image from the Dancing Dragonflies that's around five and a quarter inches by four and a quarter inches and glued that down. Below here, I have a gel print that I have adhered to another book page because it wasn't quite big enough to make its own self uh, tabs, if you will, or a, a gusset to hold it. So I've done that and it's had distressings added to the outside edges. And then for the flip, I have a couple more. This is a gel print again. This time when I added the book page, I wanted this side to be my opening for my pocket and it will go up at the top. In my case, I measured it to be almost four, three, it's about three and a quarter inches tall, and it's just a little smidge over two and a half inches wide. And then I have another gel print. This time it is five inches tall, and it will be layered on here. I went ahead and did all of these ahead of time, and I've got another image that I plan to layer. So next what I'm going to do is go to the sewing machine and I will open this up, and my idea is to stitch down this side, across the top, and back down again. This portion will be covered up, so I'm not gonna stitch on it, and then these, I will stitch all the way around all of those images. So let's go over to the sewing machine. I have a regular sewing machine. In my case, it's electronic. I've had it since, I think, 2013, 2014, or whenever I purchased this new and I got it because it had an automatic threader and an auto thread cutter. So it was worth it to me to spend a little bit of money because as, as much as I was sewing, I was having a hard time threading my needles and I really like the thud cutting feature. I have it set up for a zigzag stitch and I have black thread in the upper and black thread in the lower and I have a regular standard sewing needle. I do recommend that if you're going to sew two things, Number one, don't sew over wet glue. Make sure your project is dry. Number two, use new thread. Sure, grandma gave you that thread, but it's probably brittle. And if you start sewing with it, you'll notice thread breaks. And if that starts happening to you, you might as well just put that aside, use that for other mixed media projects and get some new thread. All right, we're gonna get started here. So as I said, I'm basically gonna sew a U on this piece and I'm gonna sew it right at right at the edge and when I get to the end and I want to go the other direction or basically make a 90 degree turn I will leave the needle down raise my presser foot rotate my project and then start put the presser foot back down and start sewing the other way so that's the first piece sewn and I'll go ahead and do the other pieces
all of the pieces so far have been sewn, so we'll go back over to the desk. Now that I have all my pieces, the next thing I want to do is I'm going to flip this over and I have strips of paper that I cut because I want this pocket to be the full width. And I could have scored this over a little bit more, but I wanted to have the real estate of this little strip. So I'm just going to add a strip of paper. I'm using Aline's Tacky Glue and a lot of people ask how I do this. I use the e Always Ready cap and I add just a little bit of water to my bottle and I reuse my bottle. So I'll get a bigger bottle and refill this smaller bottle so it's easier to manage. I add, depending on the size of the bottle, you start with like a quarter teaspoon, half a teaspoon to a teaspoon and kind of shake it, see how it works. So what I do is I will put it in the glue and then slide it over and I will look on the other side and see if I've got it far enough. And that looks pretty good and I'll trim off the excess here and I'll go ahead and trim that at a corner angle there. For mine, I did want to have a thumb hole because I like the way it looked when I was working on it. So I'm just kind of pulling this back around to itself and finding the center and just making a tiny little crease so I know where the center is. And in my case, it's because it's the only one I found. It's a one and three eighths inch hole punch by Stampin' Up. So I'm just gonna come in here and go about halfway from the top to the bottom and punch a hole. Now, sometimes the thread will catch. So I just have my scissors handy and trim that. I don't save these. If you want to, be my guest. All right, so we've got that thumb hole. I'll go ahead and add some Distress Inks to the thumb hole. I'm just using Walnut Stain. I like to use it because it's a little bit darker. All right, so this should be dry enough that I can flip it over and fold it. You don't want to do this when your paper's still wet with glue because you can glue it shut and you want to be able to use all of that. So now what I want to do is add a little bit of glue across here because my paper is eight and a half inches tall by 11 inches but my journal card is eight inches tall and I don't want it to sink all the way down. So that's why I'm putting glue across the bottom instead of making an additional gusset. All right, then I'll fold this over and then press it into place. Wipe away any excess glue. And since this part of the thumb hole is visible, I'll go ahead and just add a little bit of Distress Inks there. This piece is going to go down here so I will fold in all the tabs and then we'll glue it in place. Now, if you want a thumb hole for this one, you can put one on there. I am going to layer something over the top of it and you won't be able to see the thumb hole. So I'm not gonna use it on this one. Starting to come together now. So we have a pocket back here that goes all the way down, and then we have a shorter pocket here. I had a smaller one that apparently I've dropped. That happens to me on my desk. I don't know why, but things just disappear. So I guess that's what we're gonna do. So this is a, I call it a faux envelope, made out of a square. So this square is five inches. And what I like to do is take the square and on the inside, diagonally, crease it just a tiny bit and use my distressing tool to make a mark. And then I'll go the other way and make a mark. Some people like to actually fold it and crease it. I'm not one of those. And then what I'll do is I'll take the side flaps and looking at my little cross in the middle is fold that over until it matches and goes past that it's lined up with that line and do the same with the other side. So now when I have those done, I can then take this piece and then fold it up. And now I have a little envelope. I'm gonna add some Distress Inks to it and then we'll decorate this portion and glue it together. I'm just getting a little scrap of paper. I think I wanna stamp on the inside of that. And I just happen to have laying here, so I'm gonna use it. This is my Henna Rose stamp. And it's just a neat little decorative pattern. I have archival ink jet black. So I'm gonna stamp this coming from the top corner down and then I'll do it from the other side as well. 
and then look at it to see if there was anything else. I think I'll go ahead and stamp right there as well. So it just kind of gives it a nice little pattern on the inside. I'll go ahead and glue this together. So what I like to do is just put just a tiny dot and then fold that over. And then I'll put a little bit of glue on the side uh, corners here. And then fold that up and press it into place. And then this piece is going to be glued on top of the other gel print. This is another gel print. And I think I'll go ahead and just glue it all the way down. I'll use from here down. I just happen to have a paint chip. I stopped by one of our local hardware stores and picked this up and I was noticing that it fits. It's purple. I think that looks pretty good. So what I'm going to do is take this piece and oh I think I have this is the lavender stamp. It's a duo. It's two stamps. You get the flowers as one stamp and the word lavender is a second stamp. And I've stamped it on some scrap paper that I have and I've watercolored it. And I think that would look just really cute right on top of there. So I'm going to grab my beacon because it's a paint chip and it's kind of uh, slick. So sometimes a Lean's Tacky Glue won't stick to it. And we'll glue that down right on top. And I've got a book page. This was like the liner of the first page. And I'm going to use it to give writing space to the back of my card. And I think it's still kind of slicky feeling too. So I'm going to go ahead and use the beacon glue on the back, the Fabri-Tac. And then I like to use my paper cutter because it cuts straight for me to cut off the excess. And that will go right here. In this pocket, I've got a tag that I made out of a bunch of gel prints that I basically glued down to a book page and then I stitched it between them. And then on the back side, I added a piece of paper that I had in my stash and stitched around it and added a little bit of stamping. So that's going to go right here. This journal card is going to go back here. And I think what I want to do is give it a little decorative top. So I'm going to punch a hole with my ID slot punch. So now I've got this little hole at the top and let's grab some fabric to put in the top. Since we're doing the purple theme here, I've got this little purple fabric. I'm just going to poke that through. And I don't need it to be very tall. I just wanted enough that you can use it to help pull it out. And I'm going to go to the sewing machine and stitch across here. On the others, I did round the corners of this piece, so I'm just going to grab my crocodile and quickly round those corners. And since this is plain, I've decided I don't need to necessarily decorate it, but I will show you the other that I made that was decorated. And that's going to go right in here. I need a little bit more decoration here, so I have, let me find some. Here we go. I have these tiny postcards. It's a rubber stamp that I've stepped on some coffee dyed paper and I've added some distress inks to that. And since we have a dragonfly here, let me find a butterfly. I have a little purple butterfly that we can put right here. So I'll glue this down and put it here and then put the little butterfly on top. So that pretty much decorates the inside and you can keep adding more items. Now we're going to flip this over and I like to just kind of adjust it as needed. Now I have this piece. It needs to go down first so that I can use this full pocket because if I put it down on top of the other, things will catch on it. So I'm going to go ahead and fold in the edges and then glue this down. Oh, before I do that, I know I want to punch a thumb hole in this one, so I'm just going to line that up. 
and add some distress inks to it before I glue it down. <laughs> All right, so now I'm just going to add some glue to my little tabs. And this pocket's going at the top with the pocket going opening going to the left. And since you can see that opening there, I'll go ahead and add some distress inks. And then we'll work on the next pocket. I'm just going to get that smoothed out there. And I'll fold these pieces in. So this piece is going to go on top right here. This is going to be another pocket, but I want to stamp on here, so let me get my rubber stamps out. I have Don't Forget to Fly, so that would be Don't Forget to Fly WF106A. And Archival Ink Jet Black. And we'll stamp that right here. And I'll fold in my tabs again. And then I'll glue this piece on top of the pink. And that's, since that's a gel print, sometimes things won't stick. So I'll use my Fabri-Tac glue this time. I'll add a pocket. So now I need a journal card for this pocket. And I have one here that is three and a quarter by three and a half inches. I do want to round these outside corners. So I'm getting my crocodile, And I'm going to look at this. Let me make sure that fits. Yes, it fits. And I think I want to add some more decoration here. I've got mowed lawn and I have the vine with curls rubber stamp. These are stamps that I offer in my shop, but you can use any stamps that you probably already have. And I want to stamp this along the edge here. So I'm going to, yeah, I think I'll do it from the center out. Maybe center out, leaving a little decoration there. And I like to clean my stamps quickly after I use Distress Oxide because it will build up on your stamp. So this is going to go in the pocket. And I have pre-made some little daisies. Oh, I think this blue purple one would be good. So this is a little daisy and I just stamped a bunch of them and used watercolor pencil to color them, fussy cut them out. And I'll glue one of those right here to be a little tab decoration on my little card here. So kind of sticking out past just a tiny bit. That's why I like the thumb hole there dude, as well. That looks pretty cute. I have a little butterfly. And I think that would be good right there at the top. So I'll go ahead and glue that into place. I have a bookmark. So it's basically two inches by six inches in size and I will just pop that down in here. I have a piece of scrapbook paper that I glued to a text weight piece of paper and it is four inches by four inches. I will fold it in half and I think if I did this right it should fit. If not we'll trim it. Okay that fits. So I'm just going to make sure I have this folded and creased well. And I happen to have, these were stickers that I bought a long time ago. In fact, I've given a bunch of them in my subscription boxes and I was having a hard time using them. So I decided to just peel the backers off of them and stick them to some plain papers that I happen to have scraps of. And I thought that would look kind of cute on the front here. So I'll glue that down. And I have some labels. This is a rubber stamp that I have in my shop that I've stamped and then fussy cut out. So I'm just going to lay one of those on there. I'm trying to decide, do I want to put a word or just put, I think I'll leave it blank. That way whoever gets it, they could write something 
on here. Or maybe you'll put the date, something like that. So that goes in here. And I forgot, I have this other little bitty journal that I made. So this was a scrap that I had left over. And I took a piece of cardstock and glued it to there. And then I made a single page <laughs> for the inside for writing space. And I thought that would be kind of cute to just pop that into the pocket. All right, so now we've got the folio made. But I was finding that this little piece was flopping back and forth. So I took a two inch strip of paper and then glued a bunch of scraps, gel prints, digital papers, whatever. And depending on you, if you want to see the back side of this or not, on my example, I did glue a gel print to the back side and I sandwiched magnets in between. I think today what I'm going to do is cut this and we're going to use some Velcro. So I've got some little Velcro traps. And what I found was I cut this at, I think it was four and a quarter inches. Let me measure this one. Because I wanted it to wrap around to the back, but I didn't need the whole piece. Yeah, four and a quarter. And I saved that piece. That's how I made that little miniature journal card that went on one. Okay, so. I decide which way I want my little flappy to go. And I think I want this on top so you would open it this way and then this would flip over. So using that as my guide, making sure that I have enough that'll go around, I will get some Velcro pieces. So I'll go ahead and just kind of stick them together and I'm going to stick it on one side. They stick to my fingers. Stop that. And then line this up and stick them together and push really well. Get this out of the way. And these were some that I picked up at the dollar store, Dollar Tree, that were like a dollar something for 20 of them. So now what I'm going to do is decide where I want it positioned, and I think right about there, and I'll just fold this over and fold this over, come around to the back side, I'll add some glue here, fold it back into place. Now, I don't want things to catch on this piece, so what I'm going to do is grab some packing tape to put over that. So I've got a little piece of packing tape, and I'm just going to line that up. I think it's a little long, so I'm going to trim that piece. And then smooth this down. Now, if you want a little decoration there, I think, did I see something? Oh, here we go. I have the butterfly postage stamp, and I think that would look cute right there in the middle. So I'll just glue that into place. I know, I have to do extra things, so that's why my tutorials take so long sometimes. So here is my example, and here is what we made today, and here is another example. And so the same concept, this opens up, you have a little journal card here. In this case, I did a different type of bookmark, and this is a rubber stamp called Train Check that has the months and the dates, and you can write up here if you want, and then circle the day of the week, day of the month. And then this journal card comes out and it's the same concept as that one. And then this flips over. And in here I used a large piece of cardstock and I made a little journal card with some embossing and stamping. And then this was a oversized, oh no, this was a box, piece of a box that I laid some paper on and then used some stamped images. And then of course the card here, I did decorate because it was textured and we decided to alter the color of it. So this you can see during my live stream of how I made that one. And then this one is same concept with different elements, just using different papers. Added some different papers. This was a piece of uh, calendar 
that was in here. Get that back in the pocket. Go back. And then here was a journal card. I didn't decorate that one either. So I hope you enjoyed seeing my take of making a belly band with flip and pockets. There's multiple pockets in here. You have the Velcro. And then I would just adhere it at the top and the bottom if you want it to be a belly band. Here's a journal card that I made that could go right behind or you can glue it all the way to one side and have it be a pocket. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And I forgot to mention at the very beginning, this will be the challenge inside the Friendly Junk Journal People Facebook group for April of 2023. The idea is everybody would use this to make their own version, whatever style that they like, and then share it with the group so we can encourage each other to be creative. Again, I hope you enjoyed this. Do check out my live streams on Mondays, 3.45 p.m. Central Standard Time. Check out my other tutorial videos as well. I have over a thousand videos uploaded to YouTube. I appreciate you taking the time to watch. If you would, leave me a comment below what you thought of today's project. If there are things that you would like to see more of, maybe you want to see more of this type of project or how to make certain things, let me know. Love to have your feedback. Y'all have an amazing day. We'll see you next time. Bye, everybody.